Today we're going to talk about the Workspace ONE Excel add-in. The add-in allows you to import data from your Workspace ONE UEM API from within Excel. It runs on iOS, macOS, Windows, and Office Online, and here I'm providing documentation. If you go to ws1reporting.azurewebsites.net, you'll find the Workspace ONE Excel add-in documentation page. It covers usage, which gives you a quick overview of how to set up your API key, get logged in, those types of things. Uh, there's a current issues page that shows you anything you need to be concerned about. There's install guides for installing the app on Mac OS, Windows, iOS, and Excel Online. And then there's a, a guide for setting up an API backend. Currently there's a Windows one and I'm setting up a Linux one a little later as well. The API backend uses Redis as its caching layer, which brings the data much closer to your Excel app, which prevents having to go across the internet to the Workspace ONE environment API for all of your queries. So let's get started. I'll be doing most of my demo today on the Mac version of Excel, but I'll be also showing it on Windows as well. To log in, you click log in. I've got everything set up in memory, so I'm going to just log into my environment. Once you're logged into your environment, you'll notice there's a used cache data option down here. This allows you to turn on or turn off getting cache data from the backend Workspace ONE UEM API for certain pages. So for example, if you're looking at a device page and you want to get fresh information on a particular device, you just turn off caching, click on an update, and then turn caching back on. The main functionality currently is in our UEM tab. So for example, if I click on Get Device List, it gives me a list of all the devices that are in my environment. I can click on any one of these devices or multiple of them, get selected device data, and it pulls the device information into separate tabs for each one. Once you've got your information in the Devices tab, you can get, for example, current device apps, and it'll give you a list of apps, apps that are on the current device, what their type is, their status, and the size, for example, that type of thing, the application identifier. If you click on a device that doesn't have any apps installed and try and get the apps, you'll get a notification that no data is received at the top. Next tab is Apps. You can get the apps list, for example. I can click on, let's see, Angry Birds Firefox Browser, Get Selected Apps Data. It pulls in the data for those apps. I can then get the devices that the apps are installed on. And again, we're back to showing the device ID, the app status, it, whether it's managed, and what the app version is. Same goes here. At any time while you're doing your reporting, you can go down here and clean up sheets, and it'll remove all the sheets that you've got set up. And you can go back and get those again. The nice thing is when you're caching data is that if you click on get device list, you'll notice it comes in instantly because this data is sitting in the browser application right now. So it doesn't have to go to the API to get it. Let's go to profiles tab. Similar to the apps page, you go to get profiles list. I can click on a couple of different profiles here, get selected profile data. It'll bring in the details of that profile. And then from there, I can get the devices that the profile is installed on. Same thing, this one is empty. Let's go to this one. And here we are. So this one has a, it's installed on a single device and it shows you the installed profile version and its status. Baselines is the same. Get baseline list. I'll get both baselines here. And then get current baseline devices. You'll notice that if the status has failed for any reason, it gives you the status code along with the error message so you can go troubleshoot that device. If you've got a lot of devices in this state, it's nice because then you can sort by category and then send messages to those users. It gives you the username as well so you know exactly where to go look. In this case, this one's a confirmed install, therefore the status is confirmed, there's no error message. There are some options. Uh, currently, the only one that really counts is in devices lists. So if you get a list of the devices right now, if I go to the options tab, you'll notice there's a, a, a group list. This will show you in descending count the number of devices that are installed in each look, uh, organization group in your environment. If you do filter on group ID and then go back, for example, go back to devices and get device list again, it'll only give you the devices that are in that particular group ID. Same here, go back to the main page, and get device list and I get all the devices again. Once you've got your information into Excel, there's a couple things you can do with this data. Uh, one thing that, that one thing people have inquired about is how to tell, for example, how many how many devices are installed per user or how many user licenses you're using versus device licenses. For that, I would choose a pivot table. So let's choose a pivot table. 
a pivot table. I'm going to use the devices table here as the source data. I'm going to put it into a new worksheet. And then, for example, I'll take the ID value, drop that down here, click on info, and you can count. So that counts the number of devices. All right, and I'm going to take, I'm going to group, for example, by username. Let's put that in a row. There we go. So now I've got the three users that are in use in my environment, and it tells me how many devices they're using. For this, I can sort. You right click here, click sort, largest to smallest, and now the top ones that go at the top. So it gives you a total of your devices and how many each user has. You can also summarize. You can add columns to this if you want. For example, you can do it by operating system. So I'm going to add operating system here, and it'll show me the different operating systems that each user has and how many devices. For those of you wondering what the difference is on Windows, there's not very much. You log in. Let's go to the same environment. Okay, I've logged in. Go to UEM, get device list. Same thing. Let's grab a couple devices, get their data, get the apps that are installed in that. Go to baselines, for example, get baselines list. Let's grab this guy and get current baseline devices. Something to keep in mind, if you turn off use cache data, everything slows down a bit. So in a large environment, it slows down quite a bit. For example, on a devices page with 10,000 devices, the first time you load it, it might take a minute to get those 10,000 devices. The second time you load it with cache data, it'll take about 10 seconds. So it's quite a bit faster. It gets exacerbated quite a bit when you start going into apps, for example. Let's get the apps list. And if I click on an, uh, an application that's installed on a lot of devices, get current device apps. For every single device that this app is installed on, it has to go out and do an API call. So if you're calling 20,000 devices, that's 20,000 API calls hitting your Workspace ONE environment. However, if you're going to run multiple reports on this, and going to be slicing and dicing, when cache data is turned on and you get current app devices, it's instant. There's very little that has to happen. So let me just do that again, just to show it to you. If I delete this sheet, I'm going to get current, get selected apps data, get current app devices, and you'll notice it's instant. I don't have to go those, do those API calls to the back end anymore. It all comes from the API server. So just to give you an idea of the difference we're talking about, this is my API server that I have set up on a different machine. You'll notice that when I did that get application devices, it went to every single device and got the list of apps from the API server, and each one took a second. So if I'm doing 20,000 devices, even though I'm calling 40 or 50 at a time, it's still going to take a long time to do 20,000 devices. However, if I go back to my server, and I'll log out just so it flushes all the data, and we log back in. Now if I go back to that same applications page, let me kill this. So if I get the same app, it's instant, because on the back-end server, all you see is it found it in the cache. There is no call out to the back-end server. If I get current app devices, it comes in instantly, even though it's not in the actual application cache, because when I go back to the server, everything was found in the, in the local cache rather than having to go. So it's an instantaneous response. You're talking milliseconds versus seconds per call to the API server. So that's a quick overview. I hope you like it. I'm definitely looking for testers. So by all means, if anyone's looking to try this out, reach out to me. You can go to the web page to find out where to get it. Uh, the instructions are all there, and if you need help, feel free to reach out. I'll be happy to jump on a Zoom call and help you out. Thank you.